Vasil Bodnar, Ukraine's ambassador to Turkey, has said that a ceasefire without Russia withdrawing its troops from the occupied territory will give the aggressor time to strengthen its capabilities and resume attacks on Ukraine. Bodnar said this in an interview with Euronews. Many countries have proposed the idea of a ceasefire, but no one thinks about what it means. A ceasefire would mean that 25% of Ukrainian territory would remain under Russian control, and it would also mean buying time for Russia to strengthen its capabilities and resume its attacks on Ukraine, he added. Bodnar stressed that the solution to the problem of Russian occupation, which has been going on in Ukraine for more than two years, lies only in the defense of Ukraine's territorial integrity under international law. Any other proposal should not be taken into account, and that is why we reject it, he said. Bodnar explained that Ukraine's vision of ending the war is unified and unchanged. Our methods of achieving peace are very simple. The withdrawal of Russian troops and the defense of Ukraine's territorial integrity within the norms of international law, and then we can start talking about other possibilities. Referring to the call for a ceasefire made by Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban during his recent visit to Kyiv, Bodnar said that Orban's ceasefire proposal did not contain any details. He added that Ukraine's desire to join NATO does not intend to provoke Russia or create geopolitical changes, but only to maintain security and lasting peace. NATO is the only institution that can meet the security needs of a modern world, at least on paper, Bodnar said. He stressed that if Ukraine becomes a NATO member, it will be a natural border between other members of the alliance and Russia. Military expert Alexander Kovalenko says Russian propagandists cannot calm down after Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba's visit to China. The phrase, Ukraine is ready for negotiations with Russia, taken out of context, continues to spread across the web. An important addition to the quote, the Russian side's readiness to negotiate in good faith has not yet been observed political observer noted. According to him, it is noteworthy that the Chinese side has consistently supported Ukraine's territorial integrity and has never expressed support for recognizing the occupied territories as Russian. What is important is that Russia is trying in every possible way to push the topic of peace talks on its own terms. To maintain and spread this narrative, it resorts to primitive manipulation as it always does. In this case, its manipulation revolves around the fiction that Ukraine is ready to negotiate with Russia. Kovalenko stated, He believes that negotiations with Russia will be conducted exclusively on Ukraine's terms with an unwavering position on restoring the country's integrity within its 1991 borders. Moscow to pay residents over $21,000 signing bonus for joining army, Russia lacks troops. Moscow Mayor Sergei Sobyanin signed a decree on July the 23rd establishing a one-time signing bonus of 1.9 million rubles or $21,200 for city residents who join the military. As Russia has sought to replenish its military decimated by high losses in Ukraine, authorities have implemented financial perks to incentivize enlistment. While other regional authorities have also instituted signing bonuses such as 1 million rubles or 11,000 $200 in Krasnodar Krai and 500,000 rubles or 5,600 in Dagestan, the Moscow signing bonus appears to be the highest reported so far. With the addition of the signing bonus, a Moscow resident who enlists in the army will make over 5.2 million rubles or $58,600 over the course of their first year in service, Sobyanin's office said. Servicemen can also receive between 500,000 to 1 million rubles or $5,600 to $11,200 for being injured, and the family of a soldier killed in action is reportedly set to be paid 3 million rubles or $34,000. A variety of other perks are also offered to family members, the mayor's office said. Russia's Federal Statistics Service, Rostat, said in June 2023 that the average monthly wage across the country was around 65,000 rubles or $735. In comparison with the additional signing bonus factored, a Moscow resident could earn 433,000 rubles a month or $4,800 in their first year serving in the army. Experts say that Russia lacks the munitions and soldiers needed to launch a new major offensive in Ukraine. Russia's new May offensive in northeastern Kharkiv Oblast 
has effectively ground to a halt, but Moscow's troops maintain their pressure in Donetsk Oblast, pushing into the town of Chasivya. Ukrainian defenses have improved significantly, albeit also suffering heavy losses. It will take some time before Kyiv accumulates enough resources to launch its own counter-offensive.